what's up, Jordan? Hey, what's up? How was school? Dude, I can't believe I have to drive in Kim's car today. Dude, I know. Wait, you won't believe what I found in the back. What? I found a bunch of booze. Dude, that's so sick. What do you say we head to the park and have a little fun before some practice? I'm down. Well, time to party. Hello, orange tier. Dude, I don't know if we should do this. Mom and dad would kill us. Come on, don't worry about it. It's fine. I don't know. We've got like an hour to spare before practice. We're fine. Uh, Come on. Come on, dude, you're fine. Let's do it. Dude, I don't know. Come on, no one will ever know. It's fine. All right, fine. Cheers to Aunt Kim for letting us use your alcohol. This is great, I told you. This is, yeah. dude, what else is in here? Dude, what the heck? Dude, no way. Let's take some of this. Oh. Dude, I just won 500 yesterday for me. Dude, that's so bad. And now I think next we got to do a 100 fly. Oh shoot, dude. dude. We gotta go, we gotta go. Practice later. Do you still have time to give me a ride? Yeah, for sure. What time is that? It's at 5:30. We are gonna be so late for practice. Yo, you sure you got this? You're kind of swerving. Dude, I'm fine. Come on. Dude, you totally blew through that stop sign. I'm so glad we're out for lunch. You wanna go out? Yeah. Do you wanna go to Chick Fil A? Yes. Bro, watch out. Dude, I'm stop fine. swerving. Relax. Oh my gosh. Hey, wrong way. Dude, let's do some quick donuts right here. Slow down. Riley, look out. Jordan, 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 stop. Ah! It's gonna be a two vehicle, uh, 1179, multiple parties, uh, ejected, uh, definite injuries. Brett, wake up! Brett, come on, wake up, it's not funny!
Can you squeeze my hands? Squeeze my hands. Can you feel me touching? Mm -hmm. You feel me touching? Can you feel me touching? No. Feel no, me I touching? Can't feel them. No. You feel me touching? No. Can you move your legs? No, I can't. I can't feel them. All right, hang tight. We're gonna get you up to the hospital, okay? Is she gonna be okay? All right, we're we're working on her. All right. You just hang tight with us. Sharp CNC medic four. Please wake up, she has to be okay. Sharp, Santi Medic 4, looking to come to you with a multi-patient trauma. Again, we have two patients looking to come to you. Fourth acute status. She's my little sister, she has to be okay, please. We arrived on scene here in the parking lot at Santana High School to find a two-vehicle pileup head-on collision, one van and one small size sedan. On scene of the van, we had an 1144 and a self-extricated driver of the van. As far as the patients we're bringing to you, we have two patients, both lap and seatbelt restraint patients, small size sedan. As far as patient number one, we have a 15-year-old female. She is unresponsive, breathing shallow with a weak, thready pulse. We do have her hooked up with an 18-gauge right AC as well as a big back flowing. Most updated blood pressure came back at 70 over 50. Heart rate is 110. She's sounding 99%. We do have a non rebreather on as well. Is she going to be okay? Again, she is unresponsive with 30 pulse. As far as patient number two, we have a 16 year old. They are six sisters. She was the lap and seat belt restrained driver of the small size sedan. Only complaint for the patient was she does have no feeling bilaterally. In both she has to be okay. She can be okay. Denied any yellow scene, no head, neck, back pain. PMS is intact bilaterally in the upper extremities again, but no PMS intact in the bottom. Update on patient number one looks like we lost pulses. No, come We're on, gonna start. Brett, please, you have to be okay. We'll be into your facility in about 10. Again, both major traumas. You can activate. Brett, please, wake up. She has to be okay. All right, what's your name? Jordan, sir. Jordan, okay. Come on, Jordan. Why don't you step out for me? Who's your passenger? Uh, sister. Your sister? I was she? Okay, well, the paramedics are going to take a look at her right now. Okay. Based on the performance of your test, the presence of alcohol in your system, I'm going to turn my yard. Uh, you have been driving, uh, will under the influence of alcohol. Do me a favor, turn around.
my trade getting out. actually at the hospital right now. Uh, they think she might be paralyzed. Um, and unfortunately, uh, Brett didn't survive. Um, Paul is here with the medical examiner's office. Um, so sorry. Brett was transported to our facility, the San Diego County Medical Examiner's Office. I'll leave you with some materials. <laughs> You're going to need to get in touch with the funeral home to have her released before you're able to see her. Okay. Examination takes a couple of days to do our processing. All right. I'll leave you information if you can contact us, if any grief support or anything that we can do to help you guys. Okay. She's in our care. And like I said, contact the funeral home and then they'll, they'll be able to get her picked up and then you'll be able to see her at that time. All right. Okay. Again, I'm so sorry for your loss. If you need anything from the high patrol or from the medical family, though, Medical examiner's office, please uh, feel free to contact us with any questions you have. Okay. Thank you. Jordan and Ashland's parents? Uh, yes, we are. Uh, unfortunately, there was a crash at Santana High School. The kids were involved in a crash. Um, uh, Jordan was driving. Uh, Unfortunately, Ashton was killed in the crash. Um, and uh, Jordan is actually down at our station right now. He was he was under the influence of alcohol. Paul is here with the medical examiner's office to talk to you about uh, Ashton. She's been transported to our facility. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She's been transported to our facility for an examination. You're going to need to contact a funeral home so that you can see her. The examination takes one to two days, and we're going to have some more questions and stuff, but I don't want to bother you right now. She's at our facility. I'll leave you with some information. We have grief counselors and everything for you to help you through this. Jordan was driving? Jordan was driving, uh, and unfortunately, like I was saying before, our uh, kids were drinking alcohol. Um, <laughs> He's uh, currently at our uh, San Diego station, uh, being processed right now. He unfortunately was not injured in the crash, but he will be able to uh, contact you here probably in the next couple hours. If there's anything you need from the Highway Patrol or the Medical Examiner's Office, please feel free to contact us. Um, I understand this is a horrible thing to have to come tell parents, but. Um, anything you need, let us know. Please do. Okay. Yes, sir. Mom and Dad, thank you for always being there for me and thank you for helping me grow up and helping me, <laughs> showing me what the world is supposed to be like. Goodbye, Mom and Dad. Um, thank you so much for raising me so good and just giving me 
a life that I will appreciate. Thank you for taking me on those camping trips, um, shopping to the beach, um, just giving me a great life. Riley and Cammie, my sisters, I'm gonna miss seeing you every day, and I love you, and I'm never gonna get to give you a hug again, and I'm gonna think about that forever. I'm, I miss you. I just want to say I'm sorry to my family, to my sister. Jordan, I will miss playing sports with you, going to the beach, learning how to surf. To all the lives that I have had an impact on. Sorry to my parents for ruining your lives as well. Now that I am locked behind bars, my whole life has kind of been thrown away. What made you get in that car? Drinking, that's your own choice, I mean. But what made you get in the car behind the wheel and decide I'm gonna drive? My 15-year-old sister is dead now, thanks to your choice. And I will never get to walk again. I may not be able to have kids, I'll have to be wheeled down the aisle, and I won't get to play my favorite sports. So why did you think that you should get behind that wheel? You knew that your actions could have consequences, and today they do. They took two lives, and I won't get to walk anymore. So my question is, why? Why did you decide to do what you did? Why didn't you know better? Why didn't you call a friend? Hi, my name is Riley, and I was the driver of the car hit by the drunk driver. I'm Ashlyn, and I was ejected out of the windshield and died immediately. My name is Jordan, and I was a drunk driver. My name is Brett, and I was in the victim car. I died en route in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. This experience was very surreal for me. Um, if this happened to me in real life, you know, I'd never get to see my sisters again. I'd never get to graduate high school or go to college, all these things that I've been working towards my entire life, I would just never get to do them. So that was, it was very scary to be a part of this and think about if this actually happened to me. The things I'll miss especially most is um, high school in general and graduating, prom. I've been living life to the fullest, not, you know, really, think about what's gonna happen next. And now, I'm just gonna be locked behind bars. Um, my fate was that I was paralyzed from the waist down, which means that I will never play any of my favorite sports again. I will never get to walk out on the field for my senior night or dive in to play water polo. I won't get to have a dance party if after I get a bad grade on a math test. I won't be able to stand up and hug my best friends or my sisters or my parents and I won't get to play fetch with my dog or run or do any of the things that I love. The worst part about all of this was watching my sister die in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. I wasn't thinking about myself in that moment. All I knew is that I would never get to talk to Brett again, talk about how her day was or how my day was or ask her for advice. I knew that there was like, I screamed I love you but she didn't hear me, and that was hard. I will never get to have her be in my wedding or get to cheer her on when she plays sports or know that she's cheering me on, and that was really hard. I make the commitment today. I make the commitment today. I make the commitment today. I make the commitment today to never drink and drive. I commit to never get into a vehicle with a driver who has been drinking. I commit to challenge and encourage my friends and family to do the same. And I commit to challenge and encourage my friends and family to do the same. I commit to challenge and encourage my friends to do the same. I commit to challenge my friends and family to do the same. Please join us in this commitment too. Every 15 minutes, someone in the United States is either seriously injured or killed by a drunk driver. My name is Travis Garrow, and I work out of the El Cajon area office as the public information officer for the California Highway Patrol. Unfortunately, on average, once a week there's a fatality in East County. All too often it involves teens between 16 and 19 years old. 
One poor choice can result in a life-changing event. Over the past year alone, we've had several high-profile DUI collisions in San Diego. You, rem you may remember from last year, the four teens that attended El Capitan. They were coming from a party when the driver lost control, struck a tree, killing himself and one of the passengers. Alcohol, drugs, speed, and seatbelts all played a role. And just a week after that, the Poway kids driving on I-8 near SR-163, two more teens lost their lives. Alcohol, speed, and seatbelts again playing a role. You can read about all of these on the news outlets and other, and other forums, but what are you not seeing? How many times do we arrive on a scene, clean it up before the media ever gets there? These numbers are staggering. The senseless tragedies could all be avoided if we just made better choices. DUI is such an avoidable scenario. There are so many options besides getting behind the wheel when impaired. Our hope is that you really stop and think about the choices you are making prior to making the decision to drive. We are counting on you, the students at Santana High, to help put an end to drinking and driving. Your choices have consequences. Most of us have that invincibility mentality, that belief it will never happen to us. The thought that those things only happen to other people. We're reaching out to you today to try and help you understand that is not the case. Remember the loved ones who get left behind when someone loses their life in a DUI crash. You may even be one of those loved ones or know someone who is right now. It's okay to be a leader amongst your peers. In fact, it is what we need more of. So please, make good choices. And if you ever see someone making the wrong decision when it comes to drinking and driving, stand up, take action, be the difference maker, and help save a life. Thank you.